Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you about user defaults for your iOS app. User defaults are a very easy way to save data to a user's device, and then you are able to access that data later. And yeah, that's pretty much what it does and is very easy to do and is very good for saving, uh, for saving certain data. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so on my computer, I'm just going to open up Xcode and I'm going to create a new project. Uh, I can make this a single view app. Maybe I can call this, um, let's just say user default demo. And there's nothing different with user default on like core data where you have to select this. There's nothing different when you're setting up your application. It can be a normal application. You can add this to any application that you are currently making. So I'm just going to save this to my desktop right here. All right, so now the, um, the application has been created and configured. So now in order to, uh, actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a user interface for me to be able to demo how data is saved and then can be retrieved later from the device. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a label and I'm going to say your text here in this label, your text here. I'm going to kind of leave my label somewhere around here. I'm going to say top space to safe area, and then I'm going to center this horizontally, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm adding, if you don't already know, I'm adding constraints by right clicking, or if you don't have the right click on your mouse, you can use control click and you can drag. Um, so I'm just right clicking and dragging from my label over to the top of my view and I'm now taking top space that, that allows it to be at a certain position, um, no matter what device I'm using. And then I'm also centering it so that, you know, if there's a different device size, it'll be centered. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a text, I believe text field right here. So I'm going to take my text field. I'm going to drag it also here. I made it, I may make it a little bit wider. And so in my text, uh, my text field, basically how I, what, what I want to do with this app is that the user should input text into the text field. Then I will click a button. And when I click the button, the text is going to change this label to the text that I typed in. And then when I close my app and reopen my app using user defaults, I'll make sure that I'll be able to save the previously inputted text so that it will appear in the label. That is what I'm going to be trying to do. So I have now my text field. I'm going to add constraints to this also. Uh, again, the constraint, oops, that was a little bit weird. The constraints don't necessarily matter in this case. I'm gonna add width and then do central horizontally. It, the constraints don't matter, obviously, with um, user defaults, but it's good just for demoing purposes. I'll then add a button to the center also. I will uh, center this add vertical spacing. I may make it actually a little bit wider and then I will center this as well. And I'll say, I can maybe change the text of my button to submit, just like that. All right, so now I have the three um, user interface components of my app. Now I need to connect it to actual code. So connect to, to connect it, I'm going to click on this button right here and I'm going to click on assistant. This opens up the assistant editor where I will be able to connect the user interface elements from my storyboard to my actual code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, control click or right click and drag from your label over here. I'm going to be, I'm going to make this an outlet because it's not a, um, the two choices are outlet or action. Outlet allows you to refer to the actual um, user interface element. So I'll call this text, uh, text label, simple enough, right? And then I will do this as my text field, or I'll just call this my input field, just like that. So I've created two, two IB outlets, one for my text label and one for my input field. Now, the last thing I want to do is that because I want something to occur when my button is pressed, I need to add an action to my button. So to do that, I can right click and drag from my button down here. And then I can, connection is set to action. Instead of outlet, it's set to action. Now I can type in a name for my action, which I will do button pressed. And then it is going to be touch up inside. So basically that means when you touch, 
inside of the button and then let go. Like when you touch, like if this is your screen, you touch it and then you let go of it, that's when it triggers. So if you're holding it down, it doesn't trigger. But if you hold down and then like release it, once you release it, it triggers. So I'm going to connect this. All right, and that's pretty much all of the code that I need. So I'm going to hop over to the actual file so we're not working in split screen. So I'm going to go over to the view controller. And this is a very simple code. The only thing I need here is in my button pressed, I need to set the text of my text label. So I need to set text label dot text equal to the actual text inside of my input field. So I could say input field dot text, just like that. I'm setting the text of my label to the text of my text field. And then the last thing I need to do is actually, no, that's it for now. And I want to show you basically the reason why I'm stopping here is I want to show you what would happen normally. So I'm going to run the iPhone 11 simulator here. Okay. It may take a second to turn on. Okay, there we go. And the app should load in a quick second. Sometimes the simulator takes some time to load up. Uh, let's see. Okay, there it is. So now if I were to type in something into my text field, so okay, I'm just going to type in hello world like this, and I click submit, you'll see that my text changes, right? I can say, um, you know, the sky is blue and it changes. Now the thing is if I were to completely close out of my app like so and then I open my app you will see that the text does not save. So we're going to use user defaults to actually save our text that data to the user's device so then when we reopen the app we can pull directly from the user defaults and we'll be able to display the text that was inputted in the last app session into my label when I open a new session, okay? And it's actually very, very easy to do. And it requires only one line of, well, two lines of code, one for setting the actual user default and one for retrieving from the user default. So how do you actually do this? Well, the first thing is I want to actually, when my button is pressed, I want to save the text that's inside of my actual um, input field, right? The text that I've inputted, I want to save it in my defaults. So to do this, I can simply type in user defaults like this, and then do dot standard, dot standard, which is the default, or which is the standard default object that we use, and then dot set. So we can use the set, uh, set function in order to actually set a certain value um, to the user default. So because I want to set a string, I'm going to scroll down to the one that says set value. Uh, I don't even think there is one um, in my, I think I'm missing it here. Well, I can just do set open parentheses and then I can type in value, sorry, value, and then I can put in my value here. So I have value, and then the value that I want to set in my user defaults is I want to set my text. So I can say input field dot text, just like that. Now the thing is, is I want to actually create, in fact, do I need to include this? I don't even think I need to really include the value um, the value argument label here. I'm just going to leave it for a second just in case we do. But basically, if I'm trying to save something to my user defaults, I need a way to be able to actually access it, right? Or I need to provide some sort of um, identification um, so that when I'm trying to retrieve it out of my user defaults, there's something that I can refer, I can refer to the thing that I put in as, right? So that is called a key. So if I do um, comma, uh, for key, just like this. And then inside of the for key, I can put in a certain key that I can then refer to later in order to pull the data out. So I can say here, maybe uh, my text data, just like that, into my for key. Okay, and I do not need, I think it is true, I do not need to include the value um, argument there. So you can see what I've done is I have basically for the my text data key 
right? Inside of my user defaults, I can I set a value um, to that key so that later on when I want to access it out or when I want to access the actual value, I will be able to do so. So using this um, user defaults.sander.set, you can actually set pretty much many types of values. If you saw when I did user defaults.sander.set, I mean, some of the things I, I had where I had, you know, the URL, I had Boolean, I had double, I had float, I had integer. You have a lot of those things that you generally, um, those are a lot of the primitive types that you generally want to save data for. For example, if you're doing a game and you want to save maybe the um, the number of in-game currency that the person has, or maybe some sort of flag, right? Did they did they reach a certain checkpoint or did they um, did they unlock a certain achievement? You can do that using the um, the user defaults. You can set, for example, um, for in-game currency, you can use integer. If you're trying to do maybe achievements or flags, you can use booleans. If you want to save their in-game name, for example, you could do uh, text like how I did up here. Uh, if you wanted to maybe do something with decimal places, you could use um, double. So there are so many different things, so many different use cases you can actually use for user defaults. So it is very, very useful um, in apps to be able to save data. Okay, so now in my function, I have set the value of my input text for this particular key. But when I start my app, I want my text right here to change to the actual, um, to the value that was set, right, for this key in user defaults. So how do I do that? Well, inside of the view did load function, right, this is when the view actually loads, I can, I can write code to try to retrieve what was inside of my user defaults. So I can say let value, right, let the value from user defaults equals user defaults dot standard. But instead of doing dot set, you do dot, and then you actually type in string. So you're typing in the, um, the actual data type that you're of the, you're typing in the data type here of what is stored in your user defaults. In this case, because I stored, um, I stored input text. It's it's a string. So I when I'm trying to retrieve it out, I use standard dot string. Likewise, if you're trying to um, retrieve an integer, you would do standard dot integer or standard dot double or standard dot boolean if you're trying to get out of boolean. So you here is the actual data type of the value that you're trying to retrieve. And then the last thing is the key, and this this key needs to match up with the key that you set. Whoops. There it is. The key that you actually set the value to over here, right? I set this value for this key when I was setting it into user defaults. And now when I'm retrieving it, I need to include the key from which I'm trying to retrieve it up here. So I have let value equals user defaults dot standard dot string. All right. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to actually set now this value to the text or I want to set the text for my label to the value that I retrieve from user defaults. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a if statement. So I want to say if value is not equal to nil, right, which basically means that it actually found data from user defaults, I want to set the value of my text. Uh, I want to set the text for my text label equal to the string right here. And then else, Right. If I did not find any value stored in defaults, I want my label text to be enter or your text here, just like that. And now if I run, you can see that it says your text here because it did not find anything inside of user defaults. Now, let's say I type something, uh, some word in here, like let's say I do glasses, right? And I click submit you can see that my text changes to glasses. Now, if I were to close out of my app, just like I did before, and I reopen my app, you will see that the text for my label says glasses. So that is how you can set data and retrieve data using user defaults. It is very, very useful. This is again an introduction, so I went a little bit more in, in the talking side to be able to explain it rather than multiple, multiple different use cases. but. Um, user defaults is very, very useful for many different uses. And you can see how simple it is. 
I just I set the value in one line of code. I retrieved the value in one line of code. Yeah, I did some conditions here to, you know, but you always have to do that, especially in apps to prevent bugs and crashing. But it's very easy to use user defaults. And another um, very important use case in which you can use user defaults is actually with JSON data. So if you remember from the uh, last video or if you watched the last video, um, which was on the last Swift video, rather, it was on um, kind of using and saving JSON and, and using JSON objects in Swift. So if you actually take your objects and convert it to JSON, you can actually save your JSON in your user defaults and then retrieve it out as a string. And then you can be able to use your, um, your actual JSON objects later on. So it's very, very useful um, even for that as well. And in the future, I may do a video on, um, on actually using user defaults with JSON as well, because it's a definitely a very interesting idea. All right, so that is pretty much how to use user defaults in the most basic sense. Um, all of the actual code in this video should be in the uh, description below. It'll link to my GitHub page where you can have access to it. Um, if you liked, please like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.